Perfect. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I'm just going through questions here. And again, thank you to all of our participants for sending through questions. I'm going to try and get to all of them. Uh, let me just go on to the next question we have received. So this one comes to us from a Peterson member. And the question is as follows. It says, nearly every major and exotic brand has dipped into electrification or introduced an SUV. How does this affect the thought process for business moving forward for Pagani? Is there a philosophy behind committing to internal combustion engines? Uh, they, they don't have any initials, but this is from one of the Peterson members. So the question is uh, either electrification, SUV, or, or building our own engine, something like that? Uh, it says that pretty much every other major brand has dipped into electrification or an SUV. And is there a philosophy behind Pagani's commitment to using internal combustion engines? Uh, allora, ehm, per il motivo che usiamo motori sì. a combustione e non elettrifica. Certo. Allora, ehm, noi diciamo che ehm, parlando con i nostri clienti, ci facendo una, un po' una statistica, che quello che il nostro cliente vuole, oggi il nostro cliente preferisce ancora un motore termico, anzi, se fosse possibile, nemmeno col turbo, eh, perché vorrebbero avere un motore puro, senza ibrido e senza niente. Questo è quello che il cliente Pagani, la maggior parte diciamo, dei clienti Pagani, eh, ci chiede. Perché il, il tema dell'ibrido dell eh, comporta naturalmente un aumento anche importante del peso della vettura che... Eh, il nostro brand diciamo, si cassa per fare delle macchine leggere, perciò il cliente che compra una nostra macchina tendenzialmente è un cliente che ama diciamo, la vettura eh, leggera. Magari non ha sicuramente la potenza, ci sono macchine che hanno quasi il doppio di potenza rispetto a una Pagani, però diciamo che in termini di, 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 di quello che chiede il cliente vuole una macchina eh, leggera. Perciò l'ibrido va un po' contro anche a quello. Ecco perché abbiamo eh, deciso di andare avanti anche sulla C10, almeno fino al 2026, con una macchina ancora a motore termico. Dopo uh, so when it comes to electrification is of course a very actual uh, topic and uh, after discussing with the uh, the existing Pagani owners. So what who, who, the one they use our cars, we, we open this question to them because at the end of the day, you have to understand who's on the other side and which, uh, which are they, their thoughts uh, regarding the electrification. Uh, pretty much all of them, they, they came to us uh, saying that uh, they, if they have to decide, they want to go back to naturally aspirated engine, nor even twin turbo. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, 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 the main reason, because we are not uh, going through a hybrid solution, it's because uh, the Pagani brand and in general, the ones they buy our car, the clients, they buy our cars, they look for a lightweight car. So when you have hybrids, you always add uh, weight to a car, uh, then it's going to go against uh, the dynamic and how you drive it. Um, um, which means as well, I mean, uh, in, in, on, on our side, we feel good about the V12 uh, engine, uh, twin turbo, and also so we, we also if we don't have the same amount of power that other brands have uh, nowadays. Maybe we have half of the power of a few cars that you can uh, buy in the in the hypercar industry. But uh, to us, uh, it's this compromise between balance and the amount of power. And also uh, to go back to the electrification. Uh, we were able, thanks to uh, AMG with, with their developments, to have a V12 twin turbo engine. It's going to be the So this is uh, nowadays something that uh, we don't see it in any other brands because uh, we've, uh, we've seen other brands uh, making uh, commitments, everybody with hybrid solutions. On our side, we want to hear what the client what the client wants, and the client wants to stay with uh, with V12 without uh, hybrid. We agree. 
capaz de que se nessun cliente ce l'ha mai chiesto, nessun dealer ce l'ha mai chiesto, invece stiamo eh, lavorando da un paio d'anni su una vettura completamente elettrica. Eh, è una sfida eh, molto interessante, appunto perché eh, fare una macchina elettrica leggera, emozionante, eh, eccetera, è indubbiamente un, un argomento molto molto importante e complicato. Però è anche eh, bello per noi perché è una sfida ancora, eh, diciamo, più grande, no? Perché dal momento in cui nessuno te lo chiede e noi rischiamo il nostro, il nostro eh, il tempo, il nostro denaro per portare avanti questo, è un qualcosa che eh, ci crediamo. Perciò il nostro piano, se, se non cambia niente, è quello di arrivare al 2024 con una macchina invece completamente elettrica. Vediamo, ci stiamo lavorando duro. To add to the previous question about electrification, uh, also if uh, none of the clients or dealers in our dealer network around the world has asked for a full electric car, since uh, two years we started developing this project because we feel uh, there is a lot to develop and we feel it's a big uh, challenge for Pagani also to develop something in that field. And uh, it's, uh, it has to be lightweight. It has to be emotional. It has to, it, it has to have like, like the Pagani uh, philosophy inside the car. So it's, it's important. We are, uh, we are spending time and, uh, and, and money into this uh, amazing and crazy project. But we feel that uh, by if, if, if everything, uh, of course, doesn't change in the world, by 2024, we are going to be able to use it on the C10 platform, also a full electric uh, powertrain. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we do have another question. This one came to us by one of our more active Instagram users. Uh, his handle is at QOcean, and he writes in, he says, your cars have been displayed in some of the world's most prominent locations, including the Grand Central Terminal event last year. Which is another venue you'd like to display Pagani vehicles in front of or nearby. Obviously excluding the Peterson because we definitely want to get a car into the Peterson. But outside of that, I guess he's asking, what is another uh, sort of very prominent venue Place. you'd like to display, yeah. a Pagani display? Dice, le macchine sono state esposte in forti bellissimi giro per il mondo, tra cui il Gran Central, eccetera. C'è un posto dove ti piacerebbe portare una macchina dove se te credi che... Diciamo che lo scorso anno ho avuto un'emozione incredibile. Ah, ok, nel, nel, nel Grand Center è stato impressionante perché il posto è veramente affascinante. Però diciamo che come appassionato di Leonardo, lo scorso anno eh, per la prima volta eh, eh, hanno consentito di portare una eh, vettura Okay? di fianco alla vigna di Leonardo a Milano e, ed è stata anche una sorpresa quasi per me questa di arrivare lì c'era la, la sonda bianca ex Benicaiola dentro proprio lì di fianco alla vigna in un posto dove Leonardo ci andava spesso perciò è stata una cosa fantastica One of the most amazing moments of last year for my father was definitely when, uh, as a surprise to him, he didn't know the full story. So they were, they gave my, our company the permit to bring a Zonda. It was actually the Zonda F that belongs to uh, Benny Cayola, the white Zonda F. They brought that car next to the vineyard of Leonardo da Vinci in Milan. So uh, my father is, of course, uh, a big uh, enthusiast and uh, reader, and uh, he studies a lot about the, the history of Leonardo da Vinci and so on. So for him, it was probably the most amazing uh, day of his life uh, when it comes to locations where to display your Pagani. And uh, he brings also uh, big emotions by, by the exhibition at the Grand Central Terminal event in New York. 
And uh, this that was is outstanding. Can I, can I add, of course, uh, we need to bring a card. La, la linea, la linea era, la, la linea d'aria era a 30 metri de, dove c'è l'ultima cena, no? Perciò... The car, the car was parked probably uh, 30 meters uh, from uh, the old, uh, uh, the last supper from Leonardo da Vinci. So it wow. was, uh, it was a very iconic moment for his, uh, for his life. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, one more question, then we'll get on to uh, another topic. This one, uh, the initials are ES. This is one of our, I think, one of our younger fans. And it just says, for young artists and designers who are curious, where do you draw most of your inspiration from? Again, the initials are ES. So the, where the inspiration comes from in terms of uh, cars or in terms of... Uh... I think in general, just where, do you, where does Horatio draw inspiration from? I know it's probably from a multitude of places, but okay. is there one that sticks out more so than another? Okay. Da dove prendi l'inspirazione per disegnare la tua macchina? Questa è una domanda che sta fatta su Instagram. Ok, ok. Ma diciamo da, da tante cose, dall'osservazione, dalla curiosità, non c'è una cosa nello specifico. Eh, diciamo che cerco di, di mantenere molto molto viva questa curiosità e questa grande passione e, e appunto le cose man mano arrivano. Ecco. E poi certamente te devi mettere lì con una matita, te devi mettere lì a, a, a concentrarti, a pensare, a cercare di, così, di immaginare, eh, ma non c'è una, una sola cosa nello specifico che mi crea ispirazione, cioè tutto, dall'osservazione di tutte le cose, dal, dall'architettura, alla natura, alle macchine, alle, alle macchine vecchie, a, eh, alle biciclette, alle moto, a, a, agli impianti, ai cioè tutte le cose che vedo. Tutte, se tu stai con l'antenna, diciamo, su, tutte le cose sono un motivo, di, la musica, tutto è un motivo che, eh, che può darti delle, che ti può dare delle, degli spunti. He says that it's, um, it's, very, it's very difficult to find only one thing. Uh, what he's been always very keen is to, to keep, uh, keep his eyes very open to observe pretty much everything. So of course he loves cars, he loves things with engines when it comes to cars, old cars, new cars, uh, motorcycles, he loves bicycles, he takes a lot of inspiration from the architecture, from, uh, from, the, from the design of uh, furniture, from, uh, from the music. So, so it's, uh, it's uh, from the nature, it's, uh, it's really a combination of all these things. You, you have to set yourself to be very open and to and to, to 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 go into details sometimes, not just to look things from distance. So to to study things uh, very well, and uh, you have to draw. You have to you have to you have to put yourself in a situation where you you have to you have to start making your 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 way into the design uh, process. So it's um, it's really a combination of being always very curious. This is what he said. You have to keep yourself. But I, I always relate to my father as, as a kid. He always likes to dream and to see things with, uh, with, the, with the eyes of a kid. So a kid is uh, something, it's, it's, it's somebody that is always very, uh, that, that, you, that you can surprise yourself in a very wider way for, for, for many different things. So this is, uh, this is where it is. E poi non aspetto il momento che mi venga l'ispirazione per lavorare. Perciò non, non, non sto aspettare che arrivi questa, questa ispirazione dal cielo, ma mi metto a lavorare e intanto che lavori ti arriva l'ispirazione. You, you also have to work, you have to keep yourself busy, because if you are there and you wait for the inspiration to come to you, it's definitely not, not the right approach. So you have to keep yourself always working on something, and then if your brain is always, is always working on some kind of project, the idea then somehow comes to you but if you are in a room waiting uh, the inspiration doesn't it's not doesn't gonna come to you to, yeah <laughs> excellent thank you very much gents uh what we'll do is i have uh one other question and then what we'll do is we can sort of 
close out our meeting for today. I know that you guys probably want to get off to dinner, but I think I know the answer to this question. This comes to us from one of the Peterson members, and they simply ask, what car you drive on a daily basis? And I know that you definitely ride your bicycle quite a bit to the factory, but is there one car that you default to and drive more than another or drive on a daily basis? Una domanda da una, da una, da una persona che viene di Peter se c'è una macchina che ti piace di più guidare ultimamente ogni giorno. Lui sa che è a delle foto che usi la tua bicicletta come tuo mezzo di trasporto, però se c'è qualcosa che ti emoziona più di qualcosa ultimamente o in generale. Diciamo che eh, tutte le macchine mi piacciono, cioè non... Eh, non, non c'è una in particolare, secondo, secondo l'animo. E, e spesso, diciamo, quello, quello che faccio frequentemente è togliere la macchina del garage, metterla sotto la finestra, e fare la colazione e poi me la godo intanto che, 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 che faccio colazione anche perché faccio molto presto al mattino, perciò fra che mi alzo e vado a lavorare, delle volte passano anche tre ore. Perciò mi godo già la macchina eh, sotto la finestra, me la guardo e, e poi effettivamente più delle volte vado a lavorare in bicicletta o anche a piedi, così. Eh, però non, non ce n'è una eh, così in, in particolare. Eh, lo scorso anno ho guidato diverse volte la TDF, la Ferrari, perché mi piace moltissimo. E, e, mi piace tantissimo il, il motore, ha un sound incredibile, eh, mi piace molto quella, quella macchina lì. E poi è sempre, insomma, c'hai il volante in mano e c'è questo cavallino che ti, mm. che ti guarda o che tu lo guardi. E guidare quella macchina è sempre una bella, una bella emozione, però le amo, le amo veramente a tutte. So, uh... It's, it's very hard, really, to choose one. Uh, he just said something that it's, it's the first time he really shares this uh, with, uh, with the world, so I'm happy also to, to share it with you. Uh, as you said, he takes his bicycle to, to the office every day, so it doesn't matter of the weather. He takes his bicycle cold and hot. It doesn't matter. But he, what, what, we re, what he really enjoys is to take one car out of the garage. In the meantime, he's having breakfast. So he parks the car uh, uh, so, you can, so he can see it from uh, the window of his, uh, of his living room where he has the table where he has breakfast. And he keeps the car there and he, to, to look at it. He doesn't really drive them a lot, but he likes to change the car that he takes out of the garage and park it in front of his, uh, of his uh, um, window. Uh, he normally he, he wakes up very early he, that normally his breakfast and he, he starts to work uh, on the table where he has breakfast. He stays there for about uh, for probably two or three hours. So he has the way to really look at the cards. And uh, what he wanted to add uh, last year, he drove quite a lot uh, the Ferrari F12 TDF. It's probably one of his favorite at the time uh, right now. And uh, he, has, uh, he has a great passion for Ferrari. He has this amazing engine. The sound is incredible. And also, he said, you're sitting in the car and you have this little horse, not the Cavallino, that it's like you're looking at him. He's looking at you. So you feel <laughs> like uh, this kind of uh, combination of two things. So it's, uh, it's very special. Uh, but uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are all beautiful. It's, uh, it just depends on the mood of the day. Fantastic. I, I, I know that TDF and it is a beautiful, beautiful spec. So that makes sense. Um, one final question. I think this is a good one to kind of round out the conversation with. This comes to us from one of the existing Pagani owners and they basically ask, where does Horatio see Pagani in 20 years? What would you like to see in terms of Pagani Automobiles growth or trajectory? Dove, una domanda da un cliente che è collegato dove vedi, dove vedi la Pagani tra vent'anni allora eh, è una bella, una bella domanda eh, good question good question <ride> eh, good client <ride> sì. eh, diciamo eh, l'età media 
in Pagani, abbiamo 170 persone che lavorano, l'età media è 31 anni, perciò la gente è molto molto giovane. Una buona parte del personale è cresciuta all'interno, perciò sono cresciuti, crescono con i valori della compagnia, con i valori che le vengono tramandati delle persone che eh, lavorano con me eh, da molti anni. Lo staff tecnico, perciò tutti i miei colleghi della parte del, del design e di ingegneria, e, basicamente ha meno di 30 anni, cioè, magari c'è qualcuno che ne ha di più, ma sono tutte persone molto giovani. E questo, eh, diciamo, mi fa pensare che positivamente eh, riguardo al futuro, perché eh, me ne rendo conto che queste sono delle persone che hanno veramente tanto, tanto talento e quando disegnano qualcosa, disegnano effettivamente, creano effettivamente delle pagane. Cioè io imparo sempre di più di loro, eh, così come loro lo fanno con me. La compagnia deve eh, continuare a fare delle cose che emozionano. Perciò eh, noi abbiamo eh, fatto una scelta che è quella di non diventare dei eh, grossi costruttori che fanno 6, 7, 10 mila macchine all'anno. Perciò eh, al momento la, la politica è, è, è questa, cioè l'idea è quella di rimanere piccoli. Magari un giorno faremo 300 macchine anziché farne 50 o 1000, non lo so, fra 10 anni. Fino al 2026-2027 diciamo, eh, continueremo a fare all'incirca i numeri che facciamo oggi. Perciò, eh, però sono molto, molto, positivo, eh, molto positivo anche per i prossimi vent'anni. So he wants to take, uh, he wants to take a step uh, a little, uh, not, not to be comes to 20 years, but um, he, he's, uh, he's relating this, uh, this uh, answer, talking about how the company is today. The, the average age of the employees now is uh, 31 years old. So it's a very young team. We have 170 employees and, uh, and it's, 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 it's great to have uh, this kind of average in our company. All these people has, uh, uh, let's say, mostly of the people that work with us has been, has been growing into the company for, for a long time, which means that they, 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 they learn all the, all, the, uh, all the skills from the ones that were there before them, the ones they started the company with my father at the beginning. The design studio, the design team, the technical team, Uh, is even younger, so probably the oldest uh, is 30 years old. There are, there are a few that probably they go a little over that, but it, it's, a, it's a very young team. Uh, when it comes to the future, we see it in a, in a very positive way if we take this, uh, this uh, information. Uh, when, we, when, when, my, when my father designs the car with the design team, they, they already know how to design a Pagani car, which means that he learns from them and they learn from him is, is, on, is on, 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 let's say, on both sides. It's, uh, we want to keep our company to be, to be the way it is, so uh, to create uh, a small amount of cars per year. If you, if you combine it, if you, if you relate to the other brands, we don't do 7,000 to, to 10,000 cars a year, so we want to keep this, this brand as it is. Probably the numbers are going to change, Uh, in the future, we don't know, but until 2026, we know that the company is going to stay as it is right now, but I mean, around, uh, around 50 cars per year. So uh, we, 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 we see it in a very positive way for, for 20 years, but we also see it uh, uh, to stay as it is until 2026. Una cosa che vorrei trasmettervi, che probabilmente è stata la... Mm, la, la, la parte più difficile da, eh, come messaggio da portare a tutto il mio team di disegno è che in realtà la nostra filosofia non è nostra, cioè non è una cosa che ho inventato io. Io ho avuto la fortuna 
quando ero un ragazzino, di eh, leggere questa frase del Leonardo che diceva che l'arte e la scienza possono camminare insieme, mano nella mano. E, eh, e questo ho visto che si poteva applicare nell'automobile. E quello che ho cercato di fare quando lavoravo da solo e poi quando invece ho creato il team della Pagania Automobile. Perciò quello che mi rende abbastanza sereno è che oggi ogni persona che lavora in Pagani ha assimilato questa cultura, che non è la cultura Pagani, ma è la cultura del concetto di Leonardo da Vinci. Questa è una cosa importante. L'altra, e forse questa è la più in assoluto, la più importante, che eh, per noi, per tutti noi, il, il datore di lavoro non è Orazio Pagani. Per tutti noi il datore di lavoro è il cliente. Perciò è lui, è il cliente che ci paga lo stipendio. È lui che ci aiuta a crescere le nostre famiglie. E questo concetto è abbastanza forte all'interno della compagnia. Perciò eh, questo è molto importante perché eh, spesso questo viene trascurato. Invece eh, per noi questo è un concetto molto forte. He wants to take the opportunity to close uh, this, uh, this moment with you, also to share two very important concepts that are uh, pillars for the Pagani brand we are using a concept that doesn't really come from us. So my father was lucky enough to learn about Leonardo da Vinci and about what he made in the Renaissance. Uh, the, this, uh, this, this philosophy of uh, art and science that they can walk together hand in hand. This is something, as we said, that it comes from the past. We are not uh, inventing anything new. So we were able to, my father was able to, uh, take this, uh, this philosophy to his uh, personal life and to his personal job. And then when he created the Pagani company, he wanted to bring this uh, philosophy to all, all the team. So what is very important is that uh, this philosophy is uh, strongly uh, understood inside every single person inside Pagani. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that it, it, it has to stay for, for, for the future inside the culture of the company. The second concept that is also very important in our, in our, in our factory is that uh, uh, the boss is not Horatio Pagani. The boss uh, is the final client. When we say this, we say it because uh, it's the final client that buys the car that is the one who is, uh, who is uh, uh, who's giving the salary to the, to the employees. So, What we are doing right here is not, uh, is not uh, working for the Pagani or for, Pag for Horatio Pagani. We are working with the people that are dry driving our cars around the world. This is very, very, very important. And uh, we at Pagani really care about the families that uh, thanks to these employees are created. So every day there is a newborn. Uh, it's a new person that, uh, that is there <laughs> thanks to the Pagani family. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a social message that I think it's, a, it's important to share not only at Pagani, but in general, also in a time that we are right now where, where, where it's important uh, to, keep, to, to keep life very simple. I agree 100%. I think that is actually very well said, and it's a beautiful way to end our time together. Um, I, I can't thank you guys enough. I know that... It's been particularly difficult in Italy, but now we're sort of feeling uh, the residual effects here in California of this uh, current pandemic. But I hope that by spending time together, the clients, our prospects, the CF200 members from the Peterson Museum, I think that uh, this is a, a way to brighten our days just a bit more. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much to everyone. Thanks to all. Thank and have a good night, guys. It was great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. See ya. Bye-bye.